All right. Welcome, Team Rhino. Happy Cinco de Rhino. We are just getting started as we party like a rhino. Today, you are giving essential emergency funding for the people and organizations who are protecting rhinos during the crisis. Did you make a donation yet? Well, you can, and it'll be matched today at our website at rhinos.org or on Facebook as well. Let's keep the fun going with my next guest, Joe Hauser. He is the assistant curator at the Buffalo Zoo. Joe is also the Greater One-Horned Rhino Stud Book Keeper and the president of the International Rhino Keeper Association. Welcome, Joe. Hi, Chris. How's it going? It's going great. How's your day going? Very good. Happy Cinco de Rhino. Happy Cinco de Rhino to you as well. I wonder if you could get us started by telling us how uh, the COVID-19 pandemic is impacting zoos and uh, Buffalo in particular. Uh, it has certainly uh, done a lot to zoos across the world. You know, it's certainly not hitting only one zoo or just, you know, one country. It's, you know, impacting us all over the place. Um, so, you know, zoos have, you know, gone to many extremes of trying to deal with um, you know, making sure everybody is, you know, social distancing. Um, you know, a lot of zoos have gone to skeleton crews, so there's, you know, less chance of people crossing each other's paths um, to keep everybody healthy. Um, you know, we've gone to measures, you know, unfortunately, some people have lost their job over this um, or, you know, have furloughs or something. Um, so fortunately, at Buffalo, uh, you know, so far no one has lost their job. Um, and fortunately, um, uh, as of today, no one's gotten sick from COVID-19 at the Buffalo Zoo for our staff here. Um, so we've been, you know, generally, you know, pretty lucky about that. Um, we're definitely trying to keep our spirits high. You know, it's definitely a very trying time. Um, you know, zoos, you know, definitely, you know, in the United States, you know, most of our animal transfers um, have pretty much, you know, completely stopped or been frozen. Um, so really not, you know, shipping animals around um, for breeding and transfer plans. Um, so it's definitely a very different time. And obviously um, it's very different for us to come to work every day and not open up our gates. Um, so it's, it's definitely different, you know, walking around zoo grounds and not, you know, seeing the normal guests uh, that are normally here and uh, answering questions or, you know, taking them on tours or anything like that. So it's definitely a, a different world. I can, I can only imagine, and thank you for that update. Um, you guys have, uh, and in a lot of zoos uh, around the country, um, have started uh, bringing programs uh, to people while they're at home. So could you tell us about your, your zoo at home program and what's going on there? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, you know, the Buffalo Zoo, along with many other zoos, uh, kind of came up with the same idea of still being able to connect with uh, the normal zoo guests that they would normally have. And they came up with like this zoo to your home type of program that the marketing departments work with education departments and the animal care staff um, to sometimes take you behind the scenes to take a closer look at the animals and what goes into a day-to-day -day type of care with the animals, uh, answer questions that people might have that they would normally have if they would come and visit you. Uh, so it's been more like, you know, a longer animal keeper chat or keeper talk um, and getting to see some of the people's favorites that they might miss. You know, I know we definitely hear from a lot of our guests that, you know, you know, they have their particular favorites that they would like to see all the time that they, that's their area of the zoo that they come to all the time and so you try to bring out their favorites you know teach them a little bit about the animals uh give them updates of what's going on while they haven't been able to visit the zoo and are there any plans for reopening uh there are uh i'm sure as a lot of zoos across the country um and across the world uh have been planning for reopenings um, I know we're all itching to reopen up the gates, uh, you know, one for, you know, the revenue, you know, we are all, you know, hurting, not having the, the guest be able to come through the gates um, and just being able to kind of act almost, you know, normal, uh, you know, go back to showcasing our animals and teaching the guests about the animals. Um, so, but it's going to be a very different world um, when we do reopen, it's not going to be ripping off the band-aid and everything's back to normal. Um, so I know our team here 
um, has been working really closely with our guest experience and everything of, of how we can manage with, you know, we might not be able to go to 100%, you know, capacity when we reopen. So what does it look like for, you know, 10% or 25% or 50%, um, you know, going around with cleaning crews um, and making sure, you know, high touchable surfaces are, are cleaned. Um, you know, what do we do with our, our food stations, everything like that. So it's going to be different, but, you know, zoos are making a plan for, you know, whenever the local government or federal government makes any, you know, decisions on where we can go, we have an idea already of what we want to do. Well, that sounds good. And I know all of us are, are um, aching to get back out and we you know, definitely get to the zoo. So um, I hope, uh, I hope we get that opportunity here very, very soon um, and definitely uh, support your zoos in the meantime. Um, they need your help. And uh, when they do reopen, um, please, you know, go back and enjoy uh, the experiences that you, you always do at, at uh, those locations. Zoos play a, a very important role in conservation as well. Um, can you tell us a little bit about uh, that? Absolutely. Um, so conservation is a really broad term, really. And, you know, we participate in conservation in, you know, breeding uh, SSP animals or the species survival of plant animals um, and working with the SSP programs. Um, we participate in conservation in educating public. Like that is part of education or part of conservation is just educating, you know, zoo guests and your community about where the state of say the rhino is. Um, you know, we, we need to spread that message because you know, a lot of people ask, well, what can I do to help? And a big part of our messaging is including with the International Rhino Foundation is making sure the message of the rhino is spread because people may not know that there's you know, only you know, 70, uh, 70 Javan rhinos left, or there's less than 80 Sumatran rhinos left, or they might not even know about the poaching crisis that's going on. So we need to make sure, you know, that that message is out there for people to understand. So that's a huge part of conservation because the more people that know, the more people are willing to help and, and work together to help out because not one person, not one organization can do this by themselves. It's gonna take everybody to work together to help conservation uh, efforts. Um, and then obviously, you know, zoos raise a ton of money for field conservation work and donating to such as the International Rhino Foundation for all the great work that you guys do. Um, so it's very important, you know, we connect the guests with the animals and then we'll have our fundraisers to be able to donate those, those funds directly to you guys and will directly impact wild animals. Well, IRF is is always appreciative of uh, the support of uh, the Buffalo Zoo and other zoos. We couldn't do our work without uh, your support and, and your help in, in that regard. You work with, with greater one-horn rhinos. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about that species and maybe some of the efforts and advancements that are going on to protect it? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, the greater one-horn rhinos are definitely, I got a soft spot in my heart for them. Um, I've been working with them uh, ever since, you know, I, I just, you know, was in uh, college and working with them. Um, very unique animal, you know, they're uh, one of the larger rhinos, so I would consider the white rhino being the largest, um, but the greater one horn rhino is taller than the white rhino, so that's a little argument, but um, a very unique animal. Uh, they, you know, eat, you know, a bunch of browses and uh, trees and bushes and shrubs that, and out in the wild, but also a lot of grasses. So they're kind of a species that is a mix between a black and a white rhino because white rhinos eat 100%, you know, grasses, you know, they're 100% grazer and then black rhinos are 100% browser out in the wild. So it, they're a, definitely a, a unique animal. Um, and then uh, they're very smart, you know, it, it's, they're pretty uh, easy to train, especially the males. Male uh, greater one horn rhinos are, will work with you all day long, anytime. If you've got food in your hand, they're ready to work. Um, and our male at Buffalo is no, no exception to that. Like he, he's, he's ready to go anytime you want. You want to start training, you've got food in your hands, he's ready to go. Um, and then, uh, 
uh, overall um, in the North American population, uh, the genetics for the species uh, is pretty good. Um, we can always do better, um, you know, but unfortunately with the Asian species, uh, it is not very easily, you know, obtainable to get rhinos from, uh, you know, India or Nepal. Uh, so we're really not getting, you know, fresh genetics coming in. So that makes us, you know, make, make, making sure we are paying attention to, you know, the genetics that we have in North America right now and being very careful with our, our breeding uh, and transfer plans for the species in North America. Um, out in the wild, um, they're actually one of the, the few species that are doing better. You know, they don't have the greatest numbers. Uh, you know, they can certainly increase their numbers, um, but certainly in the International Rhino Foundation has done a, a great job in the, the uh, Indian Rhino Vision 2020 um, and increasing national parks out in the wild that will hold uh, the greater one-horned rhino. Um, and increasing their numbers out there. So the greater one horn rhino is one of the few of the rhino species that actually have been increasing in their population rather than either plateauing or decreasing because of the poaching crisis. Great. I actually have a, a question I could ask at uh, uh, this point in the conversation. I think it, uh, it fits very well. Um, in your behind the scenes keeper talk, meaning your talk at Buffalo Zoo last Wednesday, um, you mentioned the thick flap of skin that Indian rhinos have to protect their jugular vein. Is that called a BIP, B-I-P? BIB, B-I-B. -B. It's like a baby bib. BIB, B-I-B. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you. And thank you for that question from the audience. Uh, you have a special birthday coming up in a few months at the zoo. Um, how is Mohan and the other rhinos doing? They are doing good. Um, you know, obviously it's it's spring in Buffalo, uh, and springtime means uh, mud season, and you couldn't make a rhino happier uh, than giving them a lot of mud. So, does it make the yards uh, very easily cleanable? Um, you know, trying to push a wheelbarrow through knee deep mud sometimes, but rhinos love it. So this is their favorite time of the year for sure. Um, they never, you know, come inside the barn clean, you know, they always got a good, you know, couple inches of mud on their backs, which is good, you know, muddy rhino is a happy rhino, um, so we want to keep it that way. Uh, Mohan's great, you know, he's edging up on, you know, about a thousand pounds now, um, he'll be turning one uh, June 17th, uh, so we've definitely come a long way from, you know, holding our breath when he was born and, you know, Seeing that he was a male, and 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 we do our, our first exam on, on the calves when they're just you know a few hours old, and being able to get up close to him and get his first weight on him, and then you know just seeing him flourish with mom and and be a, a healthy healthy calf, which we couldn't ask for anything more. He's uh, he's getting pretty big these days, isn't he? What, what's he up to these days? He's almost a thousand pounds now. He's just a few a pounds, pounds away from a thousand. So not even one years old yet. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us a little bit more about IRCA, the International Rhino Keepers Association, and the work that it does. Absolutely. Uh, uh, the International Rhino Keeper Association is one of my favorite uh, organizations, no bias. Um, but uh, our, our main goal is to, you know, connect the rhino professionals around the world. So we are an international organization. So we do have members from the United States, uh, Canada, Mexico, South Africa, um, Australia, the UK, Indonesia, um, you, know, every, you know, they're everywhere. Um, and a lot of people have a lot of strengths of what they can do. Um, they have a lot of knowledge on training rhinos or rhino reproduction, rhino nutrition, um, so our job is to connect all those people together um, to be able to share their, their information that they know. Um, we have a, a workshop every other year. Uh, next year is supposed to be um, in, at Florida Wildlife Park in Ireland. Um, you know, in 2019, it was at Disney's Animal Kingdom in Orlando, Florida. Um, so we do try to, um, you know, scatter our workshops so they're just not all at the same place all the time. Um, to be able to connect people from around the world, like I said, just to share that information, share that knowledge, because there's always so many advancements in rhino management. 
we're learning new things all the time. You know, they're, they are endangered species, so there's not many of them. And, you know, we are constantly learning more on reproductive behavior or, or the nutrition and what we thought 10 years ago might not be the case now. Um, so we're always learning more and we're being able to, you know, connect those keepers and veterinarians and nutritionists and, you know, so many people. Uh, so I've been very proud of the work that what IRK has done. Um, we also really push conservation. So the International Rhino Foundation has worked very closely with the IRKA since its inception. Um, you know, we, you know, push the conservation messages and the work that the IRF does. Um, and we have the utmost respect for the IRF um, and we continue to do great work with you guys. Uh, you know, just last year we were able to donate funds for the Sumatran Rhino Rescue. We were able to donate, uh, you know, funds for um, stop rhino poaching with the lease that you had on earlier today. Um, we were able to um, send funds over to stop uh, rhino poaching in South Africa to uh, uh, help train the rangers over there and their, um, you know, legality stuff and law enforcement uh, so they have a better idea what they're going to do when they're out in the field. Um, so we're across the board. We try to do as much as possible. And it's all about rhinos. And that's, you know, obviously our, our main concentration is, you know, you know, getting people connected, sharing that, that messaging with people, sharing their knowledge with each other, um, and, and helping them advance in their career. Because the more that we can connect the rhino keepers and the veterinarians and nutritionists and researchers and all of them, the more we're able to do for rhinos in the future. Well, we, we, uh, we've been long standing partners with our IRCA and we thank all the keepers for both what they do for International Rhino Foundation and what they do on a daily basis to um, nurture and care for uh, the rhinos on, under their care as well. So thank you so much. If I could go to uh, another question from the um, audience, how long will Mohan stay with his mother before he's transferred? Uh, so generally, um, the calves are with their moms for about, uh, two to four years. So it'll vary. Um, sometimes we'll just let the, you know, obviously have the, the mom and the calf tell us when it's time to separate. So for the most part, the species is pretty solitary. Uh, females, uh, can tolerate each other. Um, I wouldn't really consider them really social. Like white rhinos are really the only social rhino. Um, so moms will tend to, um, you know, tolerate the calves up to around four years. Sometimes it could be more than that. Um, but generally, you know, our general thoughts are between two to four years that the calves are with the mom. Thank you. So how can people get involved with uh, IRCA and or the uh, Buffalo Zoo? Uh, well, really anybody be uh, can become a member of the International Rhino Keeper Association. So yes, we have the name uh, keeper in there. Uh, but as I said, you can be just a rhino enthusiast and really like rhinos. Uh, you can just go right to our website. It's rhinokeeperassociation.org. Um, and you can um, just join up to be a member then. Uh, we, you know, send out newsletters uh, quarterly. Um, and if you are actually, depending on your status, if you are a rhino keeper or if you're a manager of a rhino department um, or a veterinarian and do day-to-day -day work, you can uh, become a rhino professional or in, in the organization. And then you have a lot of benefits to being a member of the IRKA, like we have our uh, keeper, de um, keeper professional development program. Um, and we can set you up to work with other rhino keepers um, around the country. Um, and then you can learn, you know, their management skills and kind of, you know, bring something back to your zoo that you work for. Um, but like I said, you know, you don't have to be a rhino keeper. You can be a rhino enthusiast and that will help, uh, you know, further the goals of the IRKA and our conservation goals uh, with the IRF. Um, and the same thing goes for uh, the Buffalo Zoo. If people really want to help uh, Buffalo out, uh, we would uh, certainly be very appreciative of, of it during these very trying times, for sure. Um, you know, they can go to the Buffalo Zoo's website, buffalozoo.org, um, and make a donation there, um, or visit the Buffalo Zoo's Facebook page as well. Great. 
Joe, what gives you hope for the future of the greater one horned rhino? Uh, well, with several rhinos, including the greater one horned rhino, um, you know, kind of specifically the white rhino and the greater one horned rhino, their numbers were very low, um, you know, anywhere around 100 to 200 rhinos. And because of conservation efforts, we were able to bump, you know, the rhino, white rhino up to, you know, almost, you know, 20,000. And, you know, currently the greater one horned rhino, you know, is around uh, 3,500 or so. Um, so we have been successful with conservation efforts. So there's nothing telling me now that we can't do it again. So why not have hope saying we've done it before, we can do it again. Great. That's, that's what we like to hear here at IRF as well. Uh, any final thoughts before we uh, wrap this up? Um, I just generally want to, you know, tell all your viewers that, you know, the International Rhino Foundation, I have the utmost respect for. You guys do absolutely incredible work. Uh, I've been very honored to work with a number of your staff with the IRF, um, including you, Chris, and Stacy. Um, you know, definitely a shout out to uh, Susie Ellis, who has recently retired. I have uh, the utmost respect for for her and everything that she's done uh, in her 13 year career with the IRF. Uh, she has certainly been a mentor of mine, um, and she has, you know, went above and beyond uh, everything that the IRF have has seen in their goals. Um, and I can't wait for that to continue under Nina's uh, uh, leadership. Uh, and I encourage all your viewers, uh, if you can make any donation to the International Rhino Foundation. I definitely encourage you to. They are an incredible organization, um, and I can't say enough good things about the IRF. And of course, happy Cinco de Rhino. Happy Cinco de Rhino to everybody out there. Um, we have a little connections issue with Facebook uh, today, so we're trying to to uh, fix that real quick here. Um, but I want to say um, thank you for joining me today, Joe. And you can find more at Buffalo Zoo's website at uh, buffalozoo.org. On behalf of IRF, I'd like to thank the Buffalo Zoo and the people of Buffalo, members of IRCA uh, as well for their generous support of rhino conservation, uh, protection and habitat restoration. You're wonderful partners to IRF and we appreciate all of you.